everybody, and welcome to this episode of the Heretic Hammer Podcast. I am your host, Marshall. This is your co-host, Dylan. Hello, hello. I guess you're my co-host, but they they are also your co-host. It works both ways, I guess. Shared custody, yes, exactly. (laughs) Um, All right, so today is part two of our Eldari Eldar extravaganza, but this time... We're getting some spikes. We're going to listen to some MCR. (laughs) And we're going to get some pleasure from pain. Is that a G key I hear in the distance? (laughs) (laughs) Today we are talking about the Drukari, or the Dark Eldar, as they used to be more known as. Um, The Eldar part of the name is kind of dipped more out of the lore over time uh but it's kind of still exists as like the as like the human way of saying their name right they are what are known as the eldari in its like purest and truest sense Mm -hmm. like everything that the eldar were going into the fall or what the drukari are And if you recall, the reason that honestly that's an apt description of the Drukhari is because the Drukhari are literally the Eldar that were around during the fall, but they had pocketed themselves into this city they built into the webway called Kamora, which because it's in the webway is this, you know, just like kind of almost chaotic expansive city of just numerous directions which is why the art of it is always so crazy and confusing and mind-boggling like i love it is it on an actual land mass i don't know yes no maybe so so but the drukari that means they were really the ones who were there like they were in Kamora, in the webway, and they were, that meant they were just out of reach of this, you know, explosion. You know, much like how the Craft World Eldari were far enough away distance, the Drukhari were far enough away from in dimension. That doesn't mean that Slanesh hasn't been trying, and the rest of the Realm of Chaos hasn't been trying to knock on the door of the webway in Kamora. They actually have slipped through it in some scenarios. But they were relatively safe, you know, all intents and purposes. So because of that, they have had to, they've had a couple things kind of develop with them over time. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Outside of somewhat developing their own Comoran culture, uh, they have kind of one very specific aspect to their almost physiology now that differentiates them from the Eldar that they were and the other, you know, Eldari that exist in the universe. And that is their somewhat vampiric nature. That's right. We're talking about elven space pirate vampires. I love all of that. Every part of that is good. But when we're saying vampires, like... Because that could, that could be a lot of things. Like, there's a lot of elements to a vampire. That is correct. And conceptually, you could be looking at all of the possible, like, evil and worse parts about what a vampire would do to a being. And that's what the Alda, the Drukhari do and are. Uh, so, and that all stems from their the way that they kind of have their own kind of vampiric nature is rather than like sucking on blood or you know anything like that they they are able to almost siphon the like the specifically they will siphon the pain but honestly they'll kind of siphon the emotions is the more technically correct aspect to it they will siphon the emotions from a being, any living being, that as long as it has a soul, mm. and they will take that, and again, usually it's pain because it makes it the most vibrant and accessible, 
and it will elongate their lives. So there are Drukhari that have been alive since the fall. There are Drukhari that have been around for millions of years. And it is all just because they have played the game right and they have survived, you know, amongst this debaucherous society that they live in. But they also have kept themselves alive by means of this siphoning. And then the other way that many of the Drukhari have actually been able to then stay around is they've found various kind of wonky ways. Mostly these are for like, this is reserved amongst like a lot of the nobles and a specific tier of the Drukhari culture where they'll actually, there are actually many of them that are clones of themselves so they will like have but not in like the sense of like the Votan purely in the sense of I'm creating a backup body that I'm gonna have somebody nab my soul for and throw it in uh, before I get sent off to Slanesh and so they have three specific cultures they have the Cabals the Witch Cults and the Covens or specifically the Homunculus Covens I was about to say, how are witch cults and covens two different things? <laughs> a lot of that is just nomenclature from obviously like our usage. They wanted to obviously give them all some type of occult, you know, mm. like nomenclature. Sure. Uh, but in terms of how they work in Drukhari culture, quite differently. Um, so we'll start going by the three of them, kind of their basic culture, how they how they work, how they operate, kind of how they do their siphoning and soul sucking and all that and kind of how then that will relate uh and when we get to the homunculus covens that's when it's gonna get real dark real fast so let's get right into it so to start it off we're gonna start off with the archons these are effectively the leaders of uh, honestly out of a lot of drukhari culture uh, archons can honestly be leading, uh, can lead multiple kind of, they're, they're like effectively your highest, no, your higher and highest noble tiers of Drukhari culture, right? Like, cause they are very much in a realm where like they are very much, you know, high tier nobles, low tier underlings, and like a couple of, you know, positions in between in that ladder. Mm-hmm. Um, but they primarily are going to be the leaders of the cabals. Specifically, though, there will be the there is the supreme overlord of the city of Kamora, which is Esdrubale Vect, and he is one dark motherfucker. Uh, so, but he currently is essentially like in charge of the main actual city of Kamora. So many would inherently look at him as kind of being the leader of the Drukhari in total. Like he does have power, Mm -hmm. but it's his power doesn't just come from, you know, you must, I am, I'm sitting on the chair. Therefore that puts me in charge. You know, he is, he is in power much like a mob boss is in power. Right. Like he, in a way, he brought himself up there, both, <laughs> both in conniving ways and somewhat legitimate ways. Mostly the conniving ways because this is Drukhari, <laughs> um, and but like and like the legit ways are also fairly conniving because again, Drukhari, there's not a real like noble way of doing anything. Well, there you um, go. But the those ways would be like buying and making deals, like over the table deals, oh. and then there are plenty of the under the table deals, and then just straight up assassinations. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So he currently leads uh, the Drukhari. He obviously is always kind of getting attacked at and trying to get overthrown. That's kind of obviously a constant thing when you essentially are running a pirate esque level society. You know, it's kind of it kind of fits in the in the scheme of that, um, you know, and I wish there was a lot more current lore, like what he's doing right now, but we're just not so lucky to have that type of thing right now. And the closest we can ever get is if we read, if you get a Fabius bio book, that's about as close as we ever get. And then the archons, the normal archons below him are generally just in charge of cabals themselves. 
and they will be just your noble leaders of essentially houses right like all the like many of the Drakari nobles all have their own houses and those are also similarly are going to be the only ones that may actually end up having any type of what would you call the true born Drukhari children which means like literally just like you had a mommy Drukhari and a daddy Drukhari and they did some things and we're not going to say how they did those things because it was probably way crazier than what we are normally used to thinking about and then there was a baby born later <laughs> Blame it on the warp. <laughs> so that's actually a note I'll kind of nip right away. Uh, the Jukari get really, a lot of times it's really easy to mislabel them as almost the Chaos Eldar, but they are not. They do still very much understand. While they almost like have survived doing Slaneshi things, they are not Chaos aligned. They very much are against chaos and will try to destroy or evade it as possible because they are still just as susceptible to getting their soul sucked by Slanesh as any of the other Eldar that are out there. They're just just mentally depraved. Okay. <laughs> but then, so below them, then you'll have your standard uh, cabals, which your general Kabbalites are going to be your kind of basic soldier looking El Drukhari, right? They're going to have that kind of full set of armor pretty much any of the time. You'll see them on their raider ships, which again, look like pirate ships. They're, they're really hidden in that aesthetic, Love which it. again, a lot of that comes from, that's kind of how they are originally made. They are, they weren't when they were first made, you know, t over 20 years ago, <laughs> actually mm -hmm. over 30 years ago now, um, you know, they, they were just kind of brought up as like, okay, we're, you know, these are the space pirate Eldar, right? These are going to be, just be our, our pirate elves. They were wild and crazy, but there wasn't much of like the, essentially the kind of like BDSM nature that they really get now. Um, which I think, you know, it, it, that's a, a two-ended argument to me. Like, I kind of wish that was the case because obviously, like, or I shouldn't say even not say obviously, like, I personally have never been super crazy about, like, doing that, t any type or even that type of, like, weird sexualization. But they almost kind of make it, like, fit. But I think it's just because of how inherently grimdark the setting is, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, it doesn't feel like it's just, like, there because it's there, right? Like, you know, in most, in a lot of anime nowadays, <laughs> where it's just like, oh, we added this really dark scene that's really fucked up. Why? Because we wanted it to be spicy. <laughs> but is the rest of the series like that? No. It's actually almost a comedy. Why, then? Why do this? Right? It's not out of place, at least here. So it gets, I, that's where I can like see where the argument is. Like, I think it's fine for it to be there because it's not done in a way where it feels like it shouldn't be there in the first place. You know, could they have gotten away with not putting it in at, at all? Sure. But is that just the creative decisions I want to want to make? Sure. You know, it's their sandbox. They get to build the sandcastle. <laughs> <laughs> and they get to decide how many leather daddies hang out in that sandcastle. <laughs> exactly. Um, but the Kabbalites are going to be the ones that probably will placate to that somewhat the least. Okay. Um, the ones that you'll see them, you will definitely see them, you know, satiate in the pain and, you know, death of people. But they, especially most of the time, they're actually the ones that, in, when we get to it later on the plus side would actually just would actually kill you. They might kill you slowly, but they at least would potentially kill you mm -hmm. instead of capturing you, which is the worst fate because a lot of what they come into is that kind of lust for the, for the kill. But the other aspect about the cabals is that they are also where you will inevitably 
end up finding them getting into that realm where they might actually try to build themselves up one way or the other, whether they, you know, do it through obviously betrayal, trading, whatever, you know, making deals with, you know, other members of Drukhari society, creating alliances, stuff like mm -hmm. that. You know, they are going to you know, they they potentially will house some of those that are actually truly willing to do that um, and try to find kind of that aspect to it. Um, the other, they get lumped in with Kabbalites. They're technically their own. Um, you could see them kind of in the skull mask here. Um, and they're generally denoted with that type of helmet are incubi. Which, Incubi. like I said, they look very similar to Kabbalites, but you'll pretty much only ever find them in melee. You'll generally find them. They are technically just mercenaries. They have kind of given up on any kind of like nobility ladder kind of thing. And they are generally just like putting themselves out as very skilled and very good bodyguard to an Archon, especially. So you'll oh, okay. see them being surrounded you know you'll see them surrounding an archon pretty frequently but they are they get lumped in with the Kabbalites fairly frequently because honestly instead of trying to like find a fourth segment for one small mercenary unit it's kind of just easier to put it with what they're closest to which would be the Kabbalite warriors so that's kind of just like the one funky thing with them but yes, they the Kabbalites are ones who will actually you'll especially most find out on their ships on uh, the reavers and raiders, uh, the raider, or and, and kind of and venoms too. But <clears throat> very specifically, especially um, the raiders and and reavers. Um, am I saying that right? Hold on. No, reavers are the jet bikes. You said the it's Reavers Raider. and the, the Oakland Ravagers. Raiders? Ravagers, okay. <laughs> yeah. No, they they will be on Raiders and Ravagers. Sorry. Ravagers, okay. Um, they, and, like, the Ravagers are, like, what will have, like, just their big guns. So they'll have, the, you know, their long, they're kind of big, they're kind of, their equivalent to what would, like, a cannon gun be, which is called the Dark Lance. Mm. and kind of other heavier weaponry and then the raiders are generally like the transport vehicles um so like that's the boat where they this is the boat where they will all hop on and hop on for a ride and get to get to kill him <laughs> um but the i would say in terms of the like kill versus capture realm I would say you potentially would maybe find the Kabbalites maybe being a little bit more in the middle on that realm. Uh, they are potentially more likely to uh, capture you than, say, the next group that we'll talk about. But they may also still just end up killing you if they're just out specifically trying to maybe breach into somewhere or whatever, right? Like if you're if you're guarding and you're holding an outpost that maybe they're trying to steal something from, then maybe in that scenario. But if they're specifically on like a, we're coming to collect some slaves type run, then you, you're, you're SOL. You're in trouble. Gotcha. Um, but another part of the Kabbalite uh, that is worth noting are the scourges. One of my favorite scourges. units because who doesn't like, uh, who doesn't like a member of, who doesn't like, or essentially just like, what's not to love about a bird or bat winged uh, flying Eldar unit? Yeah. They are cool as hell. Uh, they, in terms of especially like warfare and gameplay and stuff like that, work similarly to how um, the flying unit of the Asiani worked. But for them, they especially will, uh, especially now, um, hold a lot of that same like dark lance kind of cannon weapon. So they'll do a lot of long range, just massive damage to a single target, kind of almost sniper. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, like they, and they're again, they're kind of just that's going to be their big thing is that they will kind of 
be the sniper unit, but just from a like incredibly deadly aspect to it. So very much in the city, especially, will be used like as assassins and stuff like that. Yeah. All right. So next, we'll get into the second or the the second part of the trench coat, <laughs> uh, which are going to be the witch cults of the Drukari. Ooh. And here we are like, you know, we would see primarily um, the witches themselves. They are led by a succubus, which is just a leading which really Mm -hmm. um but they one of their biggest things is that they are uh the members of the coliseums of kimura see not everybody maybe is kind of wanting or willing to maybe want to go out especially if they're nobles to maybe go out and do the raiding that they do out in, in real space, like the Kabbalites and even these witches will do. Um, the All the parts of the army we'll talk about today will go out, but not everybody wants to do that, right? Not everyone wants to be a witch, not everyone wants to be a Kabbalite, not everyone wants to be a homunculus. So what are you to do? You need to, in order to gain life, you need to find some realm of suffering, fear, and pain. Well, you put on the Colosseum. And what is the Colosseum of ancient Rome <laughs> but a place where you can find some horrid pain, fear, and destruction? Yes, yes, yes. Um, and they'll often do it in these grandiose ways. Like, they will do it, like, the show will be in multiple tiers. Uh, so, I mean, they will do it where they'll just do just essentially, like, a massive kill pit. Uh, they'll do it where there's... They'll put, like, kind of like... Uh, not really spoilers, but kind of like in Dune 2 where he's in the Coliseum <gasps> and he fights like the four. And honestly, the fact that the concept of them being like the like the few like impaired uh, Atreides. And then like the one healthy one that isn't actually that far off mm-hmm. to how these work, which really continues to put the stick into that Warhammer 40k really copied the shit out of Dune's homework uh, <laughs> but the, that's the very much the type of thing you'll see otherwise you'll see also just like they'll just send out like like a hundred humans and they'll put out like this horrid beast that will just slaughter all of them mm-hmm. no chance for survival because they'll just send them out with no weapons and just to instill and again just to get out the the death and fear that they will illuminate and that'll kind of be especially like the big refresher for the audience right like they'll get like the really big they'll get those to be like the really big ones that can actually like give the audience the satiation they need and the the life juice they need and then they'll do other parts of the shows to like really kind of benefit and give more of the thrill the entertainment part Lilith though is one of the is obviously the most prominent member of the Colosseums and the witch cults she is an amazing duelist um you know she especially in a 1v1 will absolutely demolish anybody um you know I don't know specifically how often in lore she comes out into real space I'm hoping that maybe in that new book that that will be made a little bit clearer Mm. Um, but as of now I don't really actually know Um, but she even if she were to come out in real space would still very much be a great threat Um, but uh, the, the reason I'm talking about the the witches second is because often uh, they will be sponsored by cabals, which will help them put on these shows and attain this. But when the witches go out into real space, they kind of are maybe the least or the most likely to just straight up kill you um, out of all three of them, because they their their whole pain does come from this. Now, like I said, all of them are likely to capture you because mm-hmm. I mean, look the. The witches need fodder for the Colosseum. But that's actually where it comes into good. If you are 
If you were to be captured by, again, if you're captured by the Dark Eldar, there's so many tears of bad that are potentially going to happen to you that like you wish they just killed you on the spot. The witches, at least, are potentially just leading you to also die somewhere else. <laughs> Which, in a way, is a good thing. <laughs> Because, you know, being chomped in half by some type of weird mutant beast is potentially better than what the homunculi might do. Somewhat, this is, the witches also are not always as liked by everybody because of their very, like, uh, because of that straight up just, like, you know, BDSM kind of very raunchy sexual look. Um, and I very much understand that and I can very much understand when people say, I mean, like I said, their, their leaders, like their version of Archons are literally called succubus, you know, <laughs> like obviously they're still one way or the other, very much kind of designed to look like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and like I said, so that might not be everybody's forte, but that's that's where we'll get into when we get into the the game section and the kind of building part of it <laughs> sorry that's when we get kind of into one of the nicer sides of why playing Drakari can actually be kind of nice um but that is one thing to at least just know about the witch cults in that that is very much their style however partly what you can kind of dabble into the witch cults with is their reaver jet bikes these are the ones i was confusing earlier uh, where again very acrobatic coliseum style um technically like anybody can ride or get a ride a reaver jet bike but like generally synonymous and put with the with, with the coliseums and the witch cults um you know that's kind of where you'll generally find them fast movers much like the jet bike users of the you know the asiani uh however they will use similarly deadly weaponry and will honestly even just use their jet bikes as their weapons themselves like they will very much that's why they're i mean they're pointed to a blade like consistently mm -hmm. they will even though there's like the blade on top and the sides they will do like a spin motion to be able to uh either cut somebody with that top blade or that bottom one they are very acrobatic and <laughs> show offy with their their jet bikes and their vehicles because that's just how Drukari are, especially mm -hmm. witches. Uh, the other witches unit that I didn't put here that I'll do now are the Hellions. <laughs> and the funniest thing to me about the Hellions is I think conceptually they're cool, right? Like concept, right? If you like if you don't look at them, and I described <laughs> there's a unit that uses uh, essentially dual bladed pole arms on a on essentially like a a jet board or a sky board as they call it and goes through the battlefield just you know with great speed just taking down enemies uh, in various uh, just as fast as they can right that would sound really cool but then you look at what those skyboards look like, and at first they still look cool, right? It's when you look at the feet, they really just, there's so many questions to ask. That's our glider. Also, like, their feet are, like, pointed down to ride it. Like, their ankles have got to just be, like... Is that just, like, like an, they, is that just, like, they just something can't. with the model itself, like a... Sort of a limitation of the model specifically that it's the I feet mean, earning up that way. Yes and no. Like it's still designed to have their feet on this downward slant. Mm -hmm. So like it probably looks worse with the model. Well, anyone who's worn heels but, can understand the practicality of that. All right. <laughs> right. But I feel like it always looks like it's at such a higher degree. And I don't know. Maybe it's just because artists really love to design it with as low of a degree as possible mm -hmm. you know sharp of an angle as possible but like yeah it feels like they would really be like just their angles are just ready to snap like if they got off their skyboards they would like constantly walk on like because that's the thing right it's not just that it's down 
right? Like it would be with a heel. It's down and to the sides and out. So they'd be like healed pigeon toed. The things we do for fashion. <laughs> you know what? And the witches truly do care about their fashion. Yes. I feel like uh, we've, seemingly, if, if we've established anything. But in a way, you know, there's the sex, drugs, and rock and roll, right? We've gone over the rock and roll. We've gone over the sex. And here's the drugs. <laughs> wow. Yeah. They'd be the homunculus covens. Yeah. They are going to be the ones that will experiment greatly with any form of psychotic, uh, you know, some type of numbing agent, pain or pain enhancing or pain numbing or whatever, like whatever they need to do to allow anybody to do whatever. Right. And they will also then do plenty of experiments on creatures so they will create mutants and of various kinds whether they be from animals or humanoid creatures they will do experiments in themselves various ways granting themselves multiple limbs robotic flesh it's giving, they are the ones who will it's giving techno priest a bit a little bit but like the, it's probably closer to what the like the the dark mechanicum <laughs> tech sure, priests would do yeah. but like that's the thing right it's, I mean that's the thing right like while they aren't chaos driven in the Drukari you do have to remember that it is all of this behavior that they were already doing that created Slanesh in the first place so when they just didn't stop doing it it's going to look like it's some chaos slaneshy shit. Mm-hmm. But it's not. It's they did it before it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so the homunculus are going to be the ones that will do these types of experiments and they hold kind of a special place within the triumvirate of the Drukhari, right? They're not specifically really above or below much of anyone because they they're one of those positions where, like, they're in that kind of position where they very much need everyone else, right, who will especially go into real space and grab people constantly. But they also, like, those, but, you know, those other groups very much need them. They need their science. They need their medicine. They need their boosts, right? I mean, people who want to get powerful quick you know for their get rich quick schemes they'll go to the homunculus and they will you know put themselves into service for a period of time or Mm. they'll they'll make a deal with them you give me this thing or you give me this poison or this drug and you know i'll get this for you i'll collect this many people for you i'll get this creature yeah you know they fit kind of in the middle of the two very nicely um and because of that, then they are potentially some of the most independent where they might not honestly care about what a lot of archons maybe think or say or whatever, because they're doing their own shit and they're busy. Um, and so one of the things that they will very much work into are their pain engines. Which, pain engines. Yeah. Which... Uh, you wouldn't look at them and be like, yeah, this clearly looks like, you know, this clearly looks like there's still a living person in that. But there is. Um, they've just horribly grafted them into machinery one way or the other. Mm-hmm. And just done horrible things. And so one of the main ones you'll see is called the grotesque. Uh, Accurate name. Which... I love this image. It's so funny. <laughs> yeah. Also, what is going on with this chase? This it's is grotesque. This is really good. It's just go. That Tao is running, <laughs> and he's feeble. This run is feeble. That grotesque will get him, and that grotesque is way better in close combat than that Tao is. We have some questions to ask you to benefit the U.S. <laughs> census. Please come back. <laughs> Oh, have you heard of our Lord and Savior <laughs> heroin? <laughs> we'll do a free consultation on your windows. Come back. <laughs> um, they, the grotesques are just slabs of meat that were that houses a human person in there somewhere, mm-hmm. 
and they just are constant just pumped with drugs combat drugs and stimuli Mm -hmm. to just go into town and just they generally are going to be the ones that are really going to like they're going to do a lot uh these ones specifically are going to do a lot of killing um as the ones that will actually do a lot of the capturing for especially homunculi are going to be the talos pain engines um where they'll kind of use these either guns, blades, stingers. They even have like little cages in them that they can use to like grip in and capture somebody and whisk them away. And they like levitate over the battlefield as they go through a city. Like it is wow. a pretty daunting thing to have chase you around. Mm-hmm. The Talos and the Kronos pain engines similarly, uh, both also pretty rough. And then finally, you also have, like I said, they're the other beasts. So, like, they will create almost just like animals and they will have their beast masters, which are very much focused on this kind of segment of it rather than maybe making more humanoid esque pain engines and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Uh, they will make these animal monstrosities. And these are also things that, that will also go out in that they'll give to Coliseums to test out, see how good at killing they are, stuff like that. And yeah, so the homunculus covens uh, are, like I kind of said, like they'll utilize a lot of these deals. So they'll especially cut, cut deals with archons and the like, and that's where they'll make their clones. And they'll have ways of maybe grabbing or, or you know, grabbing or securing the soul before it goes back. There is absolutely times and realms where they absolutely betray the shit out of that that archon or cabalite and uh, will put them into something like a grotesque or anything else. Right. This is also similarly where the in the Yanari. Right, you will find both the Kabbalites and former witches join their ranks, but you will not find uh, Yavrain working with the Homunculus. And in fact, it's represented by that in game when you put y- Yavrain in your Eldari army. So it'll be with the Craft World Eldari. When you put her into your group and you make her a leader, you can take witches and Kabbalites from Drukhari into the Aldari, uh, into your Aldari army. Oh. But you can't take any of the coven units. So mm. anybody that's f- with the homunculus. Uh, you can't take the grotesques, the homunculus, racks, anything. Honestly, a lot of it kind of because of some conflicting ideology, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they really just aren't beholding to what Yvrain is going to do. And honestly, it kind of spits into the face of Yuniad because they're trying to cheat death. Where with Yuniad, they're trying to have death create new life. But yeah, and so they have actually worked a lot with former Emperor's Children Apothecary Fabius Bile, who has a great book series, by the way. Great name. Um, uh, and he has, they have taught Fabius a lot about splicing, adapt, adapting, and manipulation from oh. the homunculus covens. Because while they're fucked up and weird, they know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> no one can say, look at the things that they're- they make or look at them and how they're still alive and have been alive for probably possibly millions of years and say they don't know what they're doing they're loose cannons but they get results there's one thing about the homunculus that they also are very good at doing which is not just keeping themselves and the other drukari alive but they're good at keeping you alive me the player yes or you the human who is captured by the drukari viewers like you and what if this Archon, they maybe you put up a strong fight, maybe something about you amused them, and they decided they wanted to enjoy you for a long period of time. They didn't want to just kill you, get that quick bit of suffering, bring you in. What if instead they kept you alive eternally, but instead 
contorted or bent you and shifted you around alive and all and forced you to be permanently stuck as a chair or a hat, maybe a couch and like literally stretched alive stretched out to become the shape of a couch you're the maybe cushion one and then your your wife and child are cushions two and three i mean when you put it that way it sounds a lot less fun yeah it's pretty it's pretty bad and this is where if you get captured by the drukari this is the worst thing that can happen to you you will be put onto onto spike racks and just meant to sit there in eternity kept alive constantly but given enough stimulants so that you can continue to feel pain you'll be shrunken down contorted into a ring they will find ways to make these skin leather that they wear as capes and still have that be a living being and again, this is the thing, though, that people will buy from them, that the Drukhari will buy from them so that they can have things that will keep them alive. Mm-hmm. They will so that they can feed on that pain and suffering and stay alive. But let's move on. There's a special unit I want to talk about. They got a they got a new kit recently. They finally got a refresh after having some ugly models and that were discontinued for a long time. Mm <laughs> hmm. And that is the Mandrakes. Mandrakes. See, the Mandrakes, they're not specifically mercenaries, but they are. They're not specifically Jukari, but they are. And they're definitely they not are, like us. No. They, honestly, many people would think of them as shadow demons, to be honest. And not like a chaos demon sense, because they aren't built from the warp but they are almost like the essence of a dark shadow they are they are the the darkest portions of one's soul they are the shadows incarnate and they come from inevitably what they come from and they stand in is a, essentially a shadow dimension of Kamora. Hmm. Like essentially, straight up, just like if you think of like the material realm, the Feywild and the Shadowfell, they are just the Shadowfell to the material realm of Kamora. And so much kind of believe that they, you know, they have their darkness due to kind of the darkness of the Trukari themselves. They are ones that will very much like they are just bringers of fear and despair they will they are they effectively will act as ghosts they will haunt places hide in the shadows play with their prey you know they will straight up just act like a ghost until they decide that they are finally going to come in and strike when they are the weakest. And they straight up just can traverse through the shadows. Like they will just come out of portals almost through the shadows themselves. They will only ever be in melee. And they will often then kind of just use themselves a lot like allies and mercenaries to the Jukari, but they don't take that, they don't take like a monetary form of gain. They very much will generally take it in like a set of souls. Um, And you do not renege on a deal with a Mandrake. How do you you fight them? So, uh, as will be shown in this clip from The Iron Within, uh, you could just stab them. Okay, you know, Noted. you could, you could, you can. St- the thing is that, for especially like most humans and many other creatures, especially standard ones, right? They're not gonna specifically just like, they're not gonna on their own just decide I'm gonna go hunt this space marine, right? A lot of the time they're gonna hunt, you know, a normal citizen, right, mm-hmm. or a normal guardsman, someone who's alone, and they're gonna again, they're gonna mess with them, they're gonna trick them, they're gonna find ways to create an opening, and then they're gonna strike from the shadows, right? 
they're stealth, they're assassins. Reason that it will go badly for you is because that means most likely multiple Mandrake are going to try to come get you, and that makes it inherently very difficult. The other fun fact about the Drukari is they're essentially the long, the long-running arch rivals of the White Scars. <gasps> oh. Um, it is believed that the White Scars Primarch, Jagatai Khan, is somewhere in Kamora. Um, so I'm, I personally also especially am really hoping to see that at some point. I would really love to see Jagatai Khan come back into the lore and into, into the game and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, because he's possibly one of the coolest Primarchs, I have <laughs> um, He was pretty cool. You'll see Jukari create allies of convenience with about any other Aldari that they can or wish to. Um, they often, though, will look at Craft World Aldari kind of in a little bit more of like a sneering sense, like, you know, kind of like, you bitches, you wussed out of this cool shit we got going on. <laughs> You know, because inevitably they left to escape that whole thing in the first place. And then the Harlequins stay in the middle, you know? Like I said, they they just kind of hang out. Same with the Corsairs. The Corsairs also, they're just kind of outcasts, so they'll get Drukari. You know, they'll get, they're your kind of other mini ground. They were kind of like the Inari before the Inari were around. Uh, but unlike the Inari, they didn't get a bunch of lore in cool stories. Yeah. <laughs> Lame. Otherwise, uh, getting into the tabletop, um, the Drukari are in a bit of a weird spot right now. Uh, they have been for a minute, and that is that a lot of their range is very not available at the moment. Um, they are in dire need of a range refresh. Um, not all of, like, they, and they don't need it for, like, everything. The biggest things they need it for are... Either segments of the witch cults, and I say segments, and very much the entirety of the homunculus covens need to get redone. Um, All of their models have been in fine cast, uh, except for, I think, just a couple of homunculi. But um, the... But like the grotesques, oh, the Talos are now plastic too. And actually those are good kits. Um, the Talos and Kronos are one box. You can just choose to pick one. And so you get a lot of good bits from it. Mm-hmm. Um, but a lot of times if you're making, if you're getting into Drukhari now, your two best things to do are to do a lot of kit bashing. Um, I know some people will take from kits uh, from Age of Sigmar. There's the Daughters of Cain army that make for pretty good witches and alike. Um, and then there are, before the new Mandrix came out, there were people, I knew there was somebody that took the kind of like, like forest ghosts. They're called the Sylvaneth. Um, they're like, they're like elves, but they're like spirit elves. It's kind of weird. Um, I don't know a whole lot about Sigmar lore, so please, please forgive me on that. Um, <laughs> but um, that they have, so they have like a ghostly figure, and that makes for made for decent mandrakes. But now that that kit is out, now that there's a, a they did have, do have a refreshed mandrake kit, it's not as necessary anymore. Um, but yeah, so the uh, the. But like mostly it's the coven stuff, like your grotesques, your racks, other, you know, kind of all the other segments. They were in that fine cast type resin that is just the worst to work with. So right now, the out of the kind of the free rules that exist for playing the game, if you don't know what Wahapedia is. Uh, uh, there are there's two sets of rules right now for Drukari and part of it was because of how kind of poor the reason they got to is because of kind of how poor Drukari was doing in both the meta and play count so they gave them an extra thing to bump them up so they have two ways of kind of playing them right now so they uh, they have one, one that is kind of colloquially known as like the the one piece 
version of the army. It's real. <laughs> the one piece is real. Uh, no, but uh, the like where it's essentially like the whole thing is rewards you for taking one of each segment, right? So if you take, you know, an archon, a succubus, and a homunculus, then you will get a bonus because they will utilize, they have like essentially a special point system to give them buffs and whatnot f- during the game called pain tokens. And you spend those and you get bonuses and all that. Um, and so you got bonuses of them if you had one of each. And then if you had all three, you could get more bonuses and kind of continually throughout the game get them. So it was a version of the army that really rewarded kind of having all three. But not everyone was into that, especially like if you were new, you weren't going to get into that because you can barely have any homunculus units as it is, like coven units as it is. Mm-hmm. So... They then came out with their new uh, version of it, uh, which is very much kind of about their transport segment, which feels very pirate Drukhari, right? Because it's all about putting units onto raiders, onto transports, venoms, whatever, anything that's a transport, putting, putting units onto it running up the board, getting them off, having them attack, having them go back on the ship, go somewhere else. It's really about like moving fast and going through their ships. And in general, that's kind of, that's been the most common aspect of how Jukari have always played. They've always kind of come around to the moving around on the boats, getting off of the boats, maybe getting back on the boats and going somewhere else. But they've all been about getting in and out and going around fast around the board, um, whether it be also whether it be sneaky or fa- or you know just through speed itself. That's kind of been their big mo in play style. Okay, which is why I think a lot of pe- there are a lot there's or the, why a lot of the people who play Drakari I think like them over your Eldari because the Eldari, while they do a lot of movement shenanigans too. They're generally doing it from like a cover standpoint, Mm -hmm. like getting in and out of cover really fast, where they allow you to really traverse around the board. So it's just, it's a little bit looser of a movement play style, and one that probably just attracts a different group of people. But that's what makes it nice to me, is that you kind of have, if you want to play elves, you have two options. And that's the big thing, is, you know, when you're playing them on the tabletop, that's kind of the nice part, is... You can kind of, you know, there's all the darkness and whatnot with the lore, and that has obviously its whole aspect to it. And honestly, plenty of people might be into that, you know, because if you're into grim dark, then you very easily could be into the dark side of that, right? The essentially most evil side of it. But at least on the tabletop, you have the benefit of kind of having this option of just having a play style where it is just like having a pirate game you know Mm -hmm. and that was kind of always my way of why i where i had always like looking into if i were to make jukari lists or whatever or i were to build an army when i was thinking about doing that that was going to be my plan was i was going to plan on just kind of doing um the i was planning on just doing the witches and the cabals uh i didn't really like much of the I didn't like a whole lot of the homunculus units, and so that wasn't really what I wanted to go for. I've shifted a little bit since then. I actually think the homunculus are actually a lot more cooler now that I they, despite their fucked up nature mm-hmm. <laughs> and what they do to people. But the again, go, remembering what the setting is and all that, there's I actually had realized there's a fair bit of things to at least kind of appre- not appreciate, but maybe like find cool about them. You're just like, I just think they're neat. Uh, but otherwise, that is all of Eldari in 40K. How do you feel? <laughs> it, I mean, oh man, between the last time we talked about Eldari now, there's just so much. Um, I, I'll tell you what. I, of like the... Of these sort of like three armies, the the, the quote unquote, if we talk about the quote unquote trench coat, uh, for like the yes. the dark Eldari here, um, 
I find that I do kind of think like the witch cults are kind of the most interesting thing to me. Um, yeah. I actually don't consider the kobolds like super interesting overall. Um, the archons are cool, but like I don't know if I'm like super into the kobolds. But like the witch cults, from the second we started talking about like, the the coliseum aspect of them, that was really compelling. Yeah, I think that is honestly a really fair way of looking at it. Um, I like the cabals from the aesthetic perspective. Sure. Right? And I like that they're essentially the warriors. Mm -hmm. I love the scourges. Scour yeah, the scourges are cool. I should, yeah, the scourges are pretty But neat. I think I agree. Like, from a lore standpoint, outside of Archons, you're not getting a whole lot of super intrigue. Mm -hmm. You know? So where you get into those witch cults and there's a that's where you can maybe get to some just a lot of play, you know, a lot of, you know, some of the characters might maybe can have a little bit because you can you can have characters maybe that are a little bit more, you know, a little bit more grounded because they're not going to care as much about necessarily all the hoity toity like noble stuff. But yeah, that'll do it then. All right. Was there anything else, sir? Uh, no, I think that was it. the uh, The idea you had was that for yeah. This so we'll do that after okay. afterward. Okay. Now. All right. Well, that'll be it then. So we'll figure out uh, what we're exactly going to do next week. I want to do something before we get to sisters because I'm being like pedantic and wanting them to be back on an even number episode. <laughs> uh, so until then. <laughs> We'll see you next time. Goodbye, goodbye.